to call tonight to work session Monday, October 28th to order. Can we please stand for the pledge? Okay. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to do the presentations. I don't know how many are on here first, if that's okay. If it's the roll of the board, is that okay? Yes, yes, yes. Access road is Isaac Tripp. Sure, I'll be quick. Hi, everybody. Hey, hello. hello. Can, can I just take a quick roll call? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Worthwick. Here. Mr. Duffies. Mr. Martin. Yep. Mr. Lush. Mr. Kander? Present. Mr. Gordon? There. Mr. Paul? Present. Mr. Schuster? 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 M
And what they initially put down the first time didn't work. They came back and did it again. They came back and did it again. They hand scraped it. And finally, they refunded our money and said, we can't do this job. And then we ended up getting a specialist from Allentown who came in and redid the whole thing. And believe it or not, we got 27 months out of the finish on that floor, which for a gym floor is unheard of. It's, great. It, it's, it's tremendous for, for, you know, it's used every day for phys ed, it's used for after school activities. That was unheard of. And trying to figure out how we're going to do it, it is in need of being refinished right now. So we went and I talked to our painter who was doing the gym floor at both Scranton High and West High. Um, they didn't want to do it. They said, you know, Paul, I remember what happened last time, it bubbled and, you know, we have to be very cautious. Okay. I said, I understand that, but let's, you know, we'll, we'll get quotes and see what it is. Well, the materials alone for our painters to do it is $3,100. Solution that has to go down is 35 gallons and it's 400 and some dollars for a five gallon jug for the, the special solution or the, the finish that has to go on. For the company from Allentown who did it last time to come in and do it, it's $3,700. That being said, I think it's probably in our best interest to have, have the profession done again. Um, and uh, I'm just going to move ahead with that. I mean, basketball season is going to be coming up and the kids are going to need it. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So if you're wondering why our employees were not doing it, basically it's because of history on that floor. We, we don't have a great, um, it's not easy to refinish. I remember several different colored blues in that. <coughs> well, several different, they put down a pre-finished hardwood floor in that gym. And that's what caused a ton of issue. Because when they tried to sand it and refinish it, it wouldn't adhere to the pre-finish that was already in the wood. And they ended up taking the pre-finish off. They actually had to sand down a quarter of an, or an eighth of an inch to take the whole thing off. And the amount that that floor moves, you wouldn't believe it. It moves tremendously, absolutely tremendously. And the first stuff that one company put down, it cracked around all the seams because the floor moves so much. Like it's a very special process that has to be done. And I think that's probably in our best interest to move in that way. And I just want you to have a heads up that that was occurring. <laughs> I am shocked. <laughs> 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 my mouth is actually okay. I think they call it. All right, thank wow. you. <laughs> thank you. Do we have any other presentations on the agenda? The new agenda? Anything? I don't believe so. <laughs> Budget and finance, Director Focus. Okay. Uh, under consent, we have a uh, resolution to approve the bill list, a resolution to approve exceptions to the bill list, a resolution to approve delinquent tax reports, a resolution to approve the a resolution to approve the treasurer's report, a resolution to approve the repository <coughs> sales, and a resolution uh, to uh, approve budget transfers. Thank you. Education, Director Norton. Okay, under consent, resolution to, per, to approve permission to attend, resolution to approve three hour delay schedule for <coughs> inclement weather, resolution to approve Apex winter and summer school credit recovery, um, resolution to approve outside districts to utilize Apex. Can I just make a, uh, make a, a point that the three-hour delay is, is not going to be the norm, uh, only, in that, only in the event that we need it. Correct. It's for salvage of the day, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, resolution to appoint CTC representatives. And that will be it. I hope they'll have me back. <laughs> 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 I'd like to stay. Short Thank you. Um, Director Forsberg, Corporation. Uh, under the Buildings and Grounds the Consent Agenda, there's a resolution to authorize Palumbo to prepare an RFP for Northeast Intermediate's Portico Project. Uh, under Health and Safety, but, or excuse me, under Athletics and Stadium, we have uh, under consent agenda, resolution to approve a uh, memorandum of understanding and field agreement with the University of Scranton to use the Scranton School District's Memorial Stadium and the Scranton School District to use the Kevin D. Quinn Athletics Campus. Uh, resolution to approve girls on the run organization's use of Isaac Elementary. Resolution to approve West Junior Wrestling Club's use of West Scranton High School's wrestling room. Resolution to approve Valley View High School's swim team's use of West Scranton Intermediate's pool. pool. 
and ends the consent items. And then non consent would be resolution to approve West Granton youth basketball use of West Granton High School gym for the 2019 2020 season. Is that okay if I put that under consent? Yeah. I missed And personnel. Um, for human resources, we have a resolution to approve pers personnel report, assignments, appointments, retirements, leaves of absences, and resignations. Okay. Dr. Fine, did you want to say something during personnel? Ah, I do. Thank you. Um, under the personnel report, we began the school year uh, when Dr. Kirin left in mid-August, and we were not at all ready to start the school year. We um, were all, uh, it was a sudden um, departure by Dr. Kirian. And with that sudden departure, uh, the board and I met and I said, I can help you uh, get schools open. I mean, that's what I can do. I know how to do that. I've been a superintendent and I will help you. <clears throat> and with that, um, I walked down the hallways here and said, help me, help me, help me. Uh, people stepped up to the plate and said, we'll do whatever you need uh, to have done. So as you just saw, Mr. Doherty, he, uh, his love is not for <laughs> building. Uh, however, All we he, wanted to talk about Jim Florida, he, uh, he certainly has risen to the occasion and has filled a void <coughs> that this district has needed. And we're ever so grateful, and he wears a number of hats, not the least of which um, director of secondary ed, and he, uh, we talked at length today about um, preparing for uh, report cards. And of course, we all know that we want perfection, and nothing less will be acceptable. So we have a weekend plan of uh, picnics and uh, doing a lot of work. So. Um, I'm ever so grateful for uh, Paul's willingness to step up and help. He said, I'll do whatever it takes. And then there's Anne. Anne, my first minute that I ever met Anne, she told me that uh, I had made a big mistake years ago because I, she interviewed with me at Delaware Valley. <laughs> That's exactly what she said to me. And I was like, very taken back. I was only here maybe uh, a couple weeks, and I thought, wow, that's pretty gutsy. <laughs> um, however, uh, with that, she uh, has and has been very willing to step up and help in, as the director of elementary education has done a, a, a great job with all the elementary principals. And she oversees federal programs. And for those of you who've been here, you know what a mess our federal programs were. Uh, they needed more time and attention. And uh, Anne has graciously done that. And with that, we've been able to fund her salary directly out of federal programs. So that is a uh, financial uh, decision that we made that is a very good one. On top of that, we made some other moves in this district because with the move of Paul, we needed to, uh, we moved Danielle to acting West Granton Intermediate Principal and then Shannon Rucker into acting West Granton Assistant Principal. A few meetings ago, we um, needed to have a principal at ECA and Terry Wellen had just received his principal certification. We made him acting at that time. In addition, we found that we needed to have some folks assisting at the elementary level, and Nora Phillips is presently acting elementary principal, and she is at Bancroft. And then um, Andrea Musto is our floating principal. <coughs> she goes and helps at here. Armstrong. Thank you. And with that, uh, we have had a number of people in acting positions, and they, I will tell you my evaluation of them has been excellent. 
The person that is sitting next to me on my right is Missy McTiernan, and many of you know Missy because she's been in this district, I believe, 15 years in various capacities. Just like Paul and Anne, when I said, come help, she said, whatever you need, whatever you need, I will do. I don't know how much you know about um, school leaders, but when people say, whatever you need, I'll do, that's hard to find. Um, because none of these people I mentioned asked for anything. We didn't give them anything. They, we gave them a lot of work and a lot more um, responsibility. Part of my other role, not as CRO, but uh, prior to becoming CRO, I recruit superintendents across this country. I go to, I meet with school boards all over the country, and I present candidates for the superintendency. And there are a few qualities that we look for. One is a work ethic. One is the ability to come and be honest and have high integrity and be able to get, and I say this in the simplest of terms, get the job done, whatever it is. <coughs> because every day in the role as a superintendent, there's a crisis, there's an emergency. You don't have to look very far to look back for the last couple weeks, because guess what? We had six or eight bomb threats, I lost track. <coughs> A terrible, unfortunate situation with a young man who was killed in a fire. Every single situation that has occurred, I didn't have to coach Missy through that. Missy handled it. Missy texted the, the um, board. You've been in the loop on all the communication of what happened. We had, we had bus accidents. We had. You name it, we've had it. Some days I think, what else can possibly happen here? When I said I would help you in August, I said, just give me a chance, we'll get schools open. And then I said I would report back to you in October. And I'm reporting back to you now. Everybody whose name I mentioned has done an outstanding job. They could work for me. Anne Griebeck was right. I made a big mistake a long time ago, <laughs> but I'm sure glad she's here now because that really, uh, we need great people in this district. <clears throat> There's a book that I require all of my students, I, I teach aspiring superintendents, I, I ask them all to read, and it's, lead, it's called Leading with Heart and Soul, and it's by Bowman and Deal. And what they talk about in the book is you can have all the technical skills, but if you don't lead with heart and have the soul of your district in your hand, you won't move that district forward. The lady sitting to my right has that heart and soul. And I am asking you to support her for superintendent. I know it might sound unconventional, I know, but, but she's been a preview. You've had a preview of her work. She's been in that job. Mm -hmm. She's been working 24-7 since we stepped in, what, August 14th or 15th, whatever it was. There's a change in this building that I can't tell you how wonderful it is. There are people who smile. There are people who talk. There are people who bring forth ideas. And believe it or not, people talk to me now. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen before. Um, there are people who feel comfortable with saying, this is terrible. We have to fix it. OK. You'll say, get a plate. Come on, let's sit down. Or she sets a meeting and we sit down and we and moves it forward. You could hire my company that I work for, 
we would charge you a nice sum of money. And when we got all done, she would be the leading contender, I will tell you that right now. Because I'm sorting through <clears throat> superintendent positions for a school district in the South right now, they don't have the qualities. So I hope you would consider my sincere recommendation to you as one that I don't make lightly, I make seriously for the health, safety, and future of this district. Your children need her, your staff needs her. We have a lot of healing that has to happen in this district. We have to work hand in hand with our unions. We need a contract. We have to get that done. And we need to improve our academics as well as all the other relationships. And we've broken systems here. I'm the first to tell you. We have broken systems. But I know the team that I mentioned can get the job done. Or I think you're going to be very pleased with what we bring in the next couple months with our budget. So um, I am presenting Missy to you. Thank you. I asked Missy to put together a plan as I would if I were working for you, but you're getting me free. Um, <laughs> this is I, um, I ask all the superintendents um, who are uh, entering into leadership positions to put an entry plan together. Missy's been here, so she chose to call it a transition plan, which is a really good idea. And I, uh, you have that in your packet to review. and this entire team uh, for jumping in because it is broken. We're here to make the best stuff. We're going to make you better. I have something quick. So uh, the acting position has become permanent. Could you explain where the money's coming from for that? I can. Please. Well, we, um, uh, I'll give you the round uh, numbers. We've saved and not filled a number of positions, particularly in this building, uh, to the tune of $622,000 we have saved. Um, the uh, dollars that will um, make the acting positions equivalent with the Act 93 agreement um, is about $72,000, so of that Am I right? 622 <coughs> minus 72, correct? Yeah, the impact to move the minus individuals acting would be $72,412 of salary. So um, the impact on the budget, there is still a savings of about $540,000, around $540,000. And that puts a solid leadership team in place. It does. I think our uh, building position that uh, Paul so does so well <laughs> um, is still a weak area for us, but we don't have the solution uh, right now. But again, I, I think we have saved this district a lot of money. Um, and that was that's only one position so uh, i'm not yes i know paul um, would like to not handle that but as we evolve i think we'll find some some folks yes and carl has uh is learning on the job and is taking more and more responsibility out so he will be stepping up so we'll be able to take more off of paul Thank you. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. Director Gilmartin. 
mine doesn't come with a glowing testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> we will have resolutions. A <laughs> policy. Uh, uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> 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 good about your time with that. <laughs> <laughs> we will have a resolution, second read policies, 333-705-709-805-805.1 and 805.2. And resolution for first read, administrative review, 206-331-626.1. That was some movie director. <laughs> 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 Yes, uh, next week we'll have a resolution uh, under transportation. Both will be a uh, consent, a resolution for the mile and pop contract, and a resolution for a pilot program of school bus stop arm cameras. That is all I have. So th this is the first time I've seen this. Um, does anybody have any information? Yeah. And, uh, and this, oh, oh, everybody else? We, we, talk, we talked a little bit about it. Oh, yes, we have a staff here. So I know this was something that was kind of brought So basically, we, we received a call. Uh, Dr. Fine and Pat and I sat in a conference call with the representatives from Pat. What did you say? Oh, and Kathy said. Kath, you want to explain a little bit more about, about it? That would be great. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't see you back there. Uh, <coughs> student safety uh, program. It's a pilot program that's going to run. 30 days, and when the stop arms, I'll uh, give you the camera, and uh, it's going to try how many cars go by. And it's the contractors, they're going to install another buses, they're going to be solely responsible, and they'll take them off, and the information is confidential. And then they're going to tell them how many violations. Now, last week alone, I had three go by on the house avenue, and the kids were unloading. So then they'll take to legislation, and then maybe they'll get approved to it makes some money. Because it's really dangerous. They just find out those. Yeah. Now the bus drivers right now will write down the license plate number, and they'll, they'll, they'll go to court. But this is something coming, and it's no charge to the district at all. Yeah, this was something I got. Maybe 2011, 2013. It was right. something that was talked about. Still no, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can fill in a little bit more. Um, they're collecting data mm -hmm. because right now, uh, what they'd like to do is. Uh, move forth um, a bill mm -hmm. so that all of the fine, the money that's collected from the fines, will come back to help pay for those types of cameras on school buses. So this right here is just a feasibility study to mm -hmm. see if these, right. if this will pay, for, the fines will pay for what the exactly. is. Exactly, and they're collecting data, and I think the moving parties um, in the legislature are from uh, Allen County. Yeah. So if I, I recall, but I know Allentown just adopted it, and it's just um, at at a point, it's really going to help with safety and the overall safety of right there. But it's of no cost to us at this yeah, point. Sure. It's just to collect data. Do we know what the cost will be? We do. Um, I I asked the cost, and he, um, he said it's a, about ten thousand dollars per bus. Now with that. Of course, we will be doing RFPs for bus contractors. So if this is something that is of interest, that may be something we want to include in the RFP. Anything else? There's nothing else on the back of this, right? Yeah. Okay, this is it. Yeah. <laughs>